Today we're going to take a deep dive into Nodecron, a Node.js library that allows you to execute code on a recurring basis using the very common cron syntax. If you're new here, my name is Brian Morrison. I'm a full stack dev turned developer educator, and I love creating content, teaching developers how to do various things in the software development field. On top of just exploring how Nodecron works, we're also actually going to start off by exploring uh, what a cron job is, the cron syntax, and how cron jobs are used all around the world every single day to maintain systems and keep things running uh, by scheduling and executing those jobs. Instead of just me demonstrating how to create a scheduled job using the Nodecron library, we're actually going to back up at first and explore what cron jobs are. We're also going to dive into the cron syntax and different ways that cron jobs are used. And then we're also going to move on to more advanced concepts that are used within the Nodecron library. I'm also going to show you how you can monitor your cron jobs using Croniter, which is the sponsor of today's video. If you've watched my channel before, you will notice that this video is slightly different than most of the videos that I create. Instead of me walking you through how to just write code when it comes to Nodecron, we're also going to show some slides, which is going to explain uh, the concepts in a very clean and smooth way. And by the end of this video, you should be a master of everything that is Cron and Nodecron. Before we get started, if you could do me the favor of subscribing to my channel, if this is the kind of content you're into, uh, I would be forever grateful. And then if you know anybody who would benefit from understanding how Cron jobs work and specifically how the Nodecron library would function, do me a favor and share this out uh, to that and um, hit the like button while you're while you're down there. And with that, let's go ahead and hop into it. So as mentioned in the intro, we're going to use Nodecron to execute cron jobs, but it makes sense to start with the basic question of what is a cron job? Well, in a nutshell, a cron job is a way of automating tasks and specifically it automates tasks that are scheduled to run on an interval at specific times, meaning that using the cron syntax, which we will explore in a little bit, you can specify the exact date and time that you want a specific task to run, whether it is supposed to happen every day, every week, every month, and so on and so forth. So now let's dive into some common use cases for cron jobs to have a better understanding of where you might experience them in the field. We're going to start with automated backups, which is one of the most common use cases of cron. You can use cron jobs and cron scripts to automate the backups of files and databases. Next up is log management. In software development, we typically generate lots of logs because they either need to be piped to a data warehouse for analytics or they need to be used for debugging purposes. And this data builds up on machines over time. Cron jobs can be scheduled and set up to automatically clean up the logs that are generated and stored locally on machines. Monitoring and reporting is also another common use case for cron. You can set up cron jobs to automatically check the health of servers and send reports whether th when things are not functioning properly. If you are building an application that relies heavily on reporting, you can also use cron jobs to detect when reports should be sent to customers and users of the system, and then write the necessary scripts to generate the reports and send those reports. Data management in general is another common use case. So we talked about automated backups, but databases often require specific maintenance tasks to be executed on a regular basis. Cron jobs can help to make sure that this these processes are automated. You can also use cron jobs to clear things like data caches. So if you have some data that is outdated that might be stuck in some kind of in-memory cache, cron jobs can be configured to automatically clear the information out of the cache, making room for the new data to enter the cache when a user requests that. And then finally on this list, and this is by no means an exhaustive list, is automated messaging. You can set up cron jobs to send scheduled alerts and other kinds of communications to both internal staff as well as external users for your application. If you've ever encountered a cron job in the wild, you will likely have noticed that there is a specific syntax associated with the way that they are scheduled. And it often looks something like this. Now, in this example, the five stars essentially indicates to cron that the job should run every single minute. But how does five stars inform a system that it should run every single minute? Well, we're going to dive into that right now. Each one of these five positions means something very specific to the cron system. The first position is for the minute. This can be values 0 through 59, or as we'll see in the advanced cron syntax section, there are a couple different types of values you can put in here. But essentially, this first position always means the minute that the job should execute. The second position is the hour. The third is the day of the month from 1 through 31. The fourth position is the month itself from 1 through 12. And then the fifth position is the day of the week, 0 through 7. And I have an asterisk here because both 0 and 7 indicate Sunday. So you can essentially use either one of those numbers to represent that you want a specific job to run on Sunday. 
Now that you see what each one of these position means, let's revisit our first example of every single minute. Because we have a star in all five slots, we're essentially telling the system that we want a specific job to run any minute, any hour, any day of the month, any month, and any day of the week, which essentially translates to every minute. Another example that you might see commonly is every single hour, which is essentially the number zero in the first position, which means you want the job to run at minute zero, and then any hour, day of the month, so on and so forth. Adding another zero to this would essentially mean that you want a specific job to run every single day at midnight because you want it to run at minute zero and at hour zero, but you can run it any day of the month or any month. And then for another more complicated example, we'll look at zero, zero, star, one, star, which essentially means you want this to run every day at midnight, but only in the month of January. I don't know why you'd want to do this, but I'm not one to judge. Now we've covered the basic cron syntax, but as I mentioned during that section, there is a more advanced cron syntax that you should also be familiar with if you're gonna be working with scheduled jobs out in the wild. We're gonna start with multi-values. What a multi-value lets you do is essentially insert comma separated values for specific positions of the cron syntax to indicate different times to run. For example, the cron syntax shown on screen will run the specific job on the first, second, fourth, and fifth minute of every hour. Next up, we have ranges. If you want your job to run only within specific minute, hour, or month ranges, perhaps, you can specify a range of numbers. So the specific syntax shown on screen will run the associated job on the hour between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. Next up, we have step values. What a step value lets you do is run a job at specific intervals within that slot. So the syntax on screen shows how you would run a specific job every 15 minutes on the hour. And then finally, we have named values. For the days of the week and the months, you can actually use the names of those values instead of their numeric representatives if you want something that might look a little more human friendly. So for instance, the syntax shown on screen will run every single hour, but only on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And then finally, if you're ever confused about when a specific job should run, you have the syntax or you have the uh, specific configuration, but you're not quite sure when it should run or when it's supposed to run, crontab.guru is a great resource for developers as you can put in the actual schedule into crontab.guru and it will generate a human readable version of what that specific configuration means. Now that you understand cron jobs, let's dive into the node cron library while I demonstrate how to create your first scheduled job. Here I have an empty node.js project with a blank index.js file to write our code in and nothing installed. To get started with node cron, I'm gonna type in npm install node hyphen cron and let the package install. Once installed, I'm gonna open up index.js and start by importing the node cron package. I'll type in const cron is gonna be equal to require node cron to pull in the package. And next I can schedule a job by typing in cron.schedule, passing in our cron expression. We'll just do five stars as the demonstration. And then we're gonna pass in a callback function. I'm gonna type in an arrow function here. And then inside of the arrow function, I will just type in console.log and then type in hello world. And then I'll also type new date just to show the timestamp for when this runs. Opening my terminal back up again, I will type in node index.js and let this process run. We can see hello world with the first timestamp sent to the terminal at 256. And through the power of video editing, a second hello world has appeared at 257, exactly one minute after the original hello world appeared in the terminal. So I wanna take a brief moment and talk about today's video sponsor, Chronitor. Chronitor is a system that allows you to monitor your cron jobs. While it's certainly best practice to write error handling logic inside of your code, there are instances where the cron jobs themselves may not actually execute if a system crashes or whatever. In these scenarios, Chronitor really helps by notifying you in cases where the job doesn't actually run altogether, letting you take a proactive approach to making sure your scheduled jobs execute when they're supposed to. Let's take a look at how Chronitor can help in situations like this. Chronitor is a platform that lets you monitor background jobs, and they have a really neat integration with NodeCron. So I'm inside of the Chronitor dashboard under the Jobs section, and you can see there are a number of different platforms that could be integrated with. However, I'm going to select the Language SDK, specifically Node. And inside of the integration guide, it will show you that you have to install the Chronitor library, import Chronitor, and then there's a number of different ways you can manually configure 
a specific monitor to be monitored with Cronitor. However, we can actually wrap node cron directly. And with a slight change of the code, we can monitor our node cron jobs using the same syntax we're used to with an additional name parameter. So I'm gonna head over to VS Code and show you how to do that now. I'm in VS Code and I have the same demo project open that was shown previously. I'm gonna type in npm install Cronitor to install the package. With the package installed, I am back in the same code that we had seen earlier, and we're gonna make a couple of slight modifications. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to paste in the line from the Cronitor dashboard that includes my API key, so I don't have to manually type that all myself. And then next, I'm simply gonna run Cronitor.wraps and then pass in cron. And this is essentially going to make sure that Cronitor and cron work together. Instead of using cron.schedule, I'm going to use cronitor.schedule, and then I'm simply going to add a name for my job here. So I will say hello world job, and then save the file. I'm going to open up my terminal again. I'm going to type in node cronitor demo, which is the name of the file that I just created in order to show off cronitor, and I'll hit enter. And this is going to use the same logic we had just built to echo hello world with the timestamp in the terminal. All right, we can see that a message has indeed been logged out, which means the job ran. Let's head back to the browser to the Cronitor dashboard and see what's changed there. Back in the jobs tab in the Cronitor dashboard, I now have this hello world job and I can click in this to see some statistics that we can see such as the success rate over the past seven days, how fast it takes for this job to execute the number of executions that have occurred and then any alerts that may have been sent in the last seven days. I'm gonna go ahead and click on edit and scroll down. You can see there's a number of different settings that we can configure here, such as the job details, the alert settings, and inside of my notify, I have default set as my notification list. This default list simply contains my email address. So I will get an email if for whatever reason this job does not properly execute. I can go into manage lists and integrations. We could see this is my default list. However, if I create a new notification list, there are different settings we can define here, such as email addresses or phone numbers. Or if I click on this connect Slack, page review, Telegram, and more, you can see a list of the default integrations that are available out of the box with Cronitor. Or you can always create one yourself using webhooks, which lets you handle these alerts in any way you see fit, including building automations around the alerts that come in if for whatever reason a cron job does not execute when it's supposed to. So as you can see in the basic introduction to NodeCron, using NodeCron for executing jobs on a regular interval is relatively straightforward once you understand cron syntax, but there are some advanced concepts that we can dive into as well. Starting with task management, you can actually assign the output of cron.schedule into a variable where you can execute additional methods on it, such as starting, stopping, and destroying the task. Each one of these functions will allow you to control the state of the task without having to restart or modify your application code in any way, leading to better control over when your specific jobs run. So as mentioned, you'd simply assign the output of cron.schedule to a task object, and then you can call the task.start method, which starts the task up. Is This is usually something you'd want to do at the start of the application if you want the task to start executing right away. You can also call task.stop, which will pause the task, allowing node cron to continue to track the task, but no longer executing it until you start it up again. Or finally, if you want to let NodeCron forget the task altogether, you can call task.destroy, which will remove it from memory. Building on the concept of task management is dynamic scheduling, where you can actually change the interval based on different criteria within your application. So you can see in this example, we're defining a variable called is under heavy load, uh, which theoretically could track the load of the specific server. And if this value is set to true, we are using task.setTime and passing in a completely different interval, which will allow NodeCron to change the interval in which this job is executing. Next up, it's also important to understand that NodeCron will execute jobs based on the server's current time. However, you can pass in the time zone parameter into NodeCron, which will tell NodeCron that it should execute this specific task in the time zone that you have specified. And then finally, we have expression validation, which is a simple utility which lets you define an expression inside a variable and then pass it into the cron.validate function. And depending on whether or not the cron expression or syntax is valid, you'll either get a true or false return from cron.validate. We've covered a lot of ground in this presentation, but if you're interested in getting NodeCron working in a production environment, there are some best practices you should consider 
when deploying to production. The first is surrounding scalability. If you have a specific process that's running node cron and you want to distribute it to multiple servers, you should implement some kind of queuing system or way of tracking which server is processing which job at a specific time, especially if you cannot have multiple instances of a job executing simultaneously. Otherwise, there are scenarios where executing a specific job multiple times could cause your data to become invalid or bad in some way. Next up, for small systems, it's okay to have node cron or your scheduling system working alongside something like an API or a data access layer. However, if you're working in a sufficiently complex ecosystem, you want to think about having your scheduled jobs running in a dedicated service. So you're not bogging down the, the API server or the database access, et cetera, and so forth. So consider building a dedicated project or application that is responsible for handling your scheduled tasks. Next up, we've covered how you can specify time zones when you're creating your jobs. However, this is especially important if you have your scheduler or your system running NodeCron distributed across multiple regions, as if the time zones aren't properly specified, the actual execution interval might be different than what you're expecting. Next up, you should account for failures, especially if you're working with external systems. It's inevitable that our code will eventually fail to run for one reason or another. And if your scheduled jobs are critical to the operation of your application, you need to make sure you have a way to detect when they fail and then have a good strategy in place to retry jobs that have failed. And then finally, you need to make sure that your jobs are properly being logged and monitored. Um, as with the previous point that I had mentioned, the code will inevitably fail. So having a way to detect those failures and making sure that you are logging failures in an external system that is monitored and, and can send alerts when things, uh, when things do fail is extremely important. I hope this video was informative to you and you have a better understanding of how cron works, why you'd want to use cron jobs, and how to use node cron if you're a JavaScript developer to create scheduled jobs within your code. Once again, if you like this kind of content, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel, share it with somebody, share this video with somebody you think might get something out of it, and uh, hope to see you in the next one. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.